was starting to feel frustrated. He felt as though he was everybody's second choice. He thought no one believed in him and that he was not good enough for anything. Despite being on a soccer team for the longest time, he felt as though his coach never noticed the hard work he did compared to everyone else. On top of this, even though he was the eldest brother, he felt that his parents only paid attention to his younger siblings. I am the oldest brother and the player that has dedicated the most time to the team. Why doesn't anyone treat me like that? One day at dinner, Tony was telling his parents about how school was and how well he played in his last game. One of his younger siblings began to cry and Tony's mother had to cut him off as he was talking. Tony was angry. I'm literally the oldest. Why does everyone treat me like I am the least important? Tony stormed off to his room without giving a chance to hear an explanation. Tony felt that because he was the oldest and that he had been with his parents for the longest time, his parents should favor him more than his younger siblings. Tony started to do more around the house to see what it would take to make his parents pay less attention to his siblings and more attention to him. It is not that he did not like his siblings, but he felt because they were so young, they had not yet done much to deserve this attention and even encouragement from their parents. And so, Tony began cleaning around the house. Although his parents were grateful and even applauded Tony on his efforts, they still did not spend as much time with Tony as they did with his younger siblings. Tony took this as being a sign that his parents love him less than his siblings, which surely was not the case. Tony woke up the next day, bright and early, as he had a soccer game. It was very important to Tony to win because it would prove to everyone around him that he was better and deserving of more than what he had. Tony worked so hard the whole game, but despite his efforts, his team had lost. Tony did not take this well. What if I'm just not good enough? What, is, is this why everyone acts like I don't matter? He thought to himself. Tony was holding back tears in his eyes, trying not to cry. Coach Robert saw that Tony was unwell. Hey buddy, said the coach, we just gotta make sure they don't win the next game. Tony was speechless. He had nothing to say. Coach Robert noticed that there was something deeper that Tony was dealing with. Is everything all right, Tony? You know you can talk to me. I have known you since you kicked the soccer ball for the first time. Tony took a big sigh. And that is just the thing, Coach Robert. I feel like I do much, and I'm so loyal to you. The team and my family, but no one treats me like I am. Oh, Tony, stop it right there, young boy. You know that that's not true, said Coach Robert. Of course your parents will spend more time with your siblings. They're younger, and they require more attention. You all were born into the same family, and your parents made the decision to raise and take care of all of you. It doesn't matter how long you were a part of the family. Your parents still love you no matter what. And don't get unhappy with me when I work on some of the other boys on the team more than you do. Just because they haven't been on the team for as long doesn't mean that they don't deserve the opportunity to play the games. I choose all of you specifically because I saw your potential. Whether I allow you to play five or two games or give you none doesn't mean I respect you more or less. To Tony's surprise, this made some sense to him. He was chosen by the coach to be on the team and it was time for him to start to work hard and play fairly, even if the others on the team hadn't trained for as long. This story signifies a struggle that a lot of us fall victims to, even if we don't notice it. We got caught up with what we believe and in, an, and in our own perspective of things and that we fail to believe that there could be something different or a different perspective to things as opposed to the way we are, our thoughts are directing us. So unfortunately, many of us do let our thoughts control us. We allow ourselves to become prisoners to our own thoughts and believe what we are thinking, even if it's the complete opposite from the truth. Unfortunately, this leads to feelings of little self-worth and value. In this story, it gives an example of what false thoughts can do. 
It allowed Tony to believe that he always came second and was not loved as much despite his hard work and dedication in his house and to his team. Tony believed that just because he's the oldest, it meant he should be getting more time from his parents, even though having younger siblings requires any parent to focus more their attention on them. His coach explained that to him, because not because he was he's been there longer in the family, that means he needs more of it. So yes, he came first, but his siblings are still younger and they still need more attention. That doesn't mean that they don't love him or care about him. It just means that just because that they needed a certain kind of attention that when he was their age he needed as well and his parents provided it for him for the, his parents provided this attention for him and in return they're doing the same for his younger siblings so but however despite the fact that he was getting applaud and his parents were very grateful for what he was doing around the house he decided to disregard the appreciation and hold on to the aspect he thinks he's lacking Similar to new members on his soccer team, his coach spent more time with them because they needed it more. He knew Tony since Tony was first able to kick a ball, so he knew his, what he was capable of. However, that doesn't mean that his effort, efforts are being unrecognized or that his coach isn't grateful. So, he just, so it doesn't mean that his coach is appreciating him any less. He just knows that he is capable, but because they joined late, they are also deserving of the same treatment that Tony got, Tony got when he first joined. Tony resembles many of us. We tend to always think we deserve things, especially more than others, because we have been there longer or we're the oldest or whatever reason that satisfies our thoughts. However, God called upon us so that we may love each other and recognize that we all deserve to be loved. It's not a matter of duration or age or effort, but it's about character and perseverance that we have knowing that we may not always get what we think we deserve, but we are appreciative of what we have. And we should also always keep in mind that we usually get what we deserve and not because we don't see it, that means it, we're not receiving it. So when we are like that and we learn these aspects, that's only when the few obedient ones will be the ones chosen from the calling. Call 
In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. So the last will be first, and the first last, for many are called, but few chosen. Matthew chapter 20, verse 16. The first part of this verse, the last will be first, and the first last, apparently was used by the Lord Jesus Christ more than once. It occurs in three contexts in the Gospels as follow. The first context in Matthew chapter 19 verse 30 and the parallel in Mark 10 verse 31. When Jesus encountered the rich young man ruler who asked him what to do to inherit the eternal life, the young man turned away from Jesus for he was unable to give up his great wealth and give to the poor. Then Jesus' disciples asked the Lord, what reward they would have in heaven since they had given up everything to follow him. Jesus promised them a hundredfold as much, which is to be understood as a blessings in this life from consolation, peace, and spiritual gifts, plus eternal life. Then he said, but many who are first will be last and the last first. First will be last refers to those who are like the young rich man, while he may be first in this world with honor or wealth, he will be last in the world to come. And the last will be first refers to those who are like the disciples, while they were last in this world, being lowly and humble, they will be first in the world to come. The second context in Luke chapter 13 verse 30. When Jesus was teaching the Jews, one asked him in Luke 13 verse 23, Lord, are there few who are saved? His answer implied who will be saved and how in Luke 13 verses 24 to 30. He said, strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many will seek to enter, but will not be able, for they will be laid, and the door will be shut by the master of the house. The Lord then concluded his talk by this verse in Luke 13, verse 30, And indeed, there are last who will be first, and there are first who will be last. Last who will be first refers to those who accept Christ and go through the narrow gate. In true love to God, real change of heart, and sincere repentance, 
like those who accept Christ from the Gentiles. And first, who will be last, refers to those who reject Christ and refuse to go through the narrow gate out of pride, self-righteousness, or hypocrisy. Like those who reject Christ from the Jewish religious leaders and the Pharisees, although they were first in God's plan. St. Cyril of Alexandria says, The Israelites were called first to salvation, but rejected the Messiah, whereas the Gentiles were called last, and because they embraced Jesus as Lord and Savior, they will come first in the kingdom of Jesus Christ. The third context in Matthew chapter 20, verse 16. When the Lord was talking about the kingdom of heaven in the parable of the laborers in the vineyard, resembling himself with the landowner of a vineyard who goes out five times throughout the day to hire laborers, and according to the Jewish custom, the day is divided into five hours or intervals from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. First hour at 6 a.m., third hour at 9 a.m., sixth hour at 12 noon, ninth hour at 3 p.m., and eleventh hour at 5 p.m., which is the last hour a worker can consider coming to work. So the landowner goes out every hour to hire laborers for his vineyard. He agrees to pay the usual full price per day of one denarius, with every laborer who come to work in the vineyard, regardless of his starting time or the number of working hours. In the evening he calls all laborers and give them their wages, beginning with the last to the first. They receive each one denarius as agreed, but those who came first complained. The landowner explained that he did not treat anyone unfairly, though he was more generous to some than to others. We can be assured that God will never ever be unfair to us, though he may bestow greater blessing on someone who seems less deserving. He will never be less than fair, but reserves the right to be more than fair if he wishes. The Lord then ended this parable with the verse in Matthew 20 verse 16, So the last will be first, and the first last, for many are called, but few chosen. Our early church fathers contemplated on this parable in two wonderful ways as follow. First contemplation, the five hours or intervals can signify the stages of man's individual life. First hour refers to infancy, third hour refers to childhood, sixth hour refers to adolescence, ninth hour refers to adulthood, and eleventh hour refers to the old age. The evening, which is the end of the work day, refers to the end of man's individual life, which is his hour of death. So the first point here is God keeps calling every one of us individually in each stage of our lives. And as we don't know when the evening comes, the end of our lives, we should not postpone our repentance. As St. Augustine says, do not postpone, do not shut the door which is open for you now. Here is the donor of forgiveness having the door open before you, so why do you postpone? Rejoice, the door is open even though you have not knocked, but will it stay open forever? You do not know what will happen tomorrow. Second contemplation, the five hours or intervals can signify the humanity history across all ages. First hour from Adam to Noah, third hour from Noah to Abraham, sixth hour from Abraham to Moses, ninth hour from Moses to Christ, and eleventh hour from Christ to the end of days. 
the last hour here, when the Lord came down from heaven in the fullness of time, was incarnate, became man, was crucified, rose from the dead, and ascended into the heavens until he come again to judge the world. So the evening, which is the end of the work day, refers to the end of times, the day of judgment. So the second point here is God keeps calling us throughout the entire human history. From one generation to the other, from Adam till the second coming of Christ, he is calling for laborers to hire in the, his vineyard to give them eternal life, as St. Gregory the Great says, there is no age in which the Lord has stopped sending laborers to work in his vineyard, that is, teaching his people. In conclusion, there are several ways in which the first will be last and the last will be first. There are some who seem far ahead but found themselves falling behind those whom they despised. The parable of the prodigal son shows an example of the first who became last in the older son through his envy and jealousy, and the last who became first in the younger son through his repentance. There are some who were first in privilege, yet are not first in kingdom. Based on the New Testament's terms, the Gentiles have equal access to the kingdom of heaven, although they had not served God under the Old Testament. And the Jews, who had labored long under the Old Testament, were jealous of His grace extended to the Gentiles. There are some who were first in rank, yet might never enter the kingdom. Jesus told the Pharisees that the tax collectors, despite being sinners, were being saved ahead of them. In Matthew 21 verse 31, Assuredly I say to you, the tax collectors and harlots enter the kingdom of God before you. There are also some who were first to follow Christ in time, yet are not the first in the kingdom. Judas Iscariot was one of the first disciples and was honored to be the treasurer, yet his greed led to his undoing. And Paul of Tarsus was the last of the apostles, yet the one who labored the most. Finally, there is laid up for him the crown of righteousness. So the last will be first, and the first last. A quote from Father Beshoy Camo. Make use of all the chances around you, leading you to perfection. The chance to do good, the chance to pray, the chance to be humble, the chance to sacrifice, the chance to be silent, the chance to share Christ in his pains. <laughs>